You know, just because we can't hear them, many times we think that the heavens and the earth and all of these celestial bodies do not communicate, but indeed they communicate with their Creator. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us that as He completed the creation, He commanded the heavens and the earth to come forth, either in compulsion or in submission. And they said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَتَيْنَا طَاعِينَ That we come in full obedience and full submission to you, O oh Allah. And Allah even mentions to us, إِنَّا عَرَضْنَا الْأَمَانَةَ عَلَى السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَالْجِبَالِ That we offered the trust to the heavens and the earth and the mountains. And what that means is, the trust here refers to you know, the, the duties and obligations and the consequences and rewards and punishments and so on and so forth. But they refuse that, recognizing their own incapability. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَبَيْنَا أَنْ يَحْمِلْنَهَا وَأَشْفَقَنَا مِنْهَا وَحَمَلَهَا الْإِنسَانِ Instead, mankind took that responsibility on, they took that obligation on. Now this is very significant when Allah mentions to us the heavens and the earth coming to Him in submission, obeying Him. Uh, not going out of order, not going out of orbit, fully recognizing their obedience to their Creator. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention all of this? Allah says to those that refuse to believe, that refuse to place themselves in practical submission, أَأَنْتُمْ أَشَدُّ خَلْقًا أَمِ السَّمَاءِ You know, are you greater of a creation? Are you more difficult to create or do away with? Are you more magnificent of a creation? Or the heavens, the skies, the things that are around you? Right? Even they submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even they declare the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we find many different ways Allah mentioning it to us in the Quran. Allah says that the heavens and the earth cry. مَا بَكَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا كَانُوا مُنْظَرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the people of Fir'aun and people that are like Fir'aun, tyrants and oppressors and those that bring no benefit to this world. Allah says that when they depart from this world, nor the heavens or the earth shed a tear for them. They don't cry for them. And Ibn Abbas عنه, he was asked, do the heavens and the earth cry? I mean, we know the people, the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth would shed tears. But do the heavens and the earth actually cry? And Ibn Abbas عنه, he said, there is not a single one of us except that when they depart from this world, the place of sajda, the place of prostration, where you used to bow your, your, fa- your head and you used to prostrate and you used to say, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, declaring the perfection of your Lord the Most High. There's not a single place on earth that doesn't cry when the person no longer makes sujood in that spot. And Ibn Abbas anhu said, and there's a gate through the, sam- through the samawat, there's a gate through the heavens through which your good deeds ascend to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you pass away and that gate is closed, the heavens also cry. However, you obviously don't hear their crying. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might allow you to hear uh, something, and, and this really refers to the Prophet ﷺ and his companions, in order to show a miracle or a sign. As we see with the Prophet ﷺ, that when he left the tree that he used to lean up against, uh, when he would give khutbah and he would bask in its shade, the Prophet ﷺ, as he left it to start standing on the pulpit, on the menbar that was built for him, the tree started to cry and it started to shake in a way that even the companions could hear. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, it missed the knowledge that it used to hear. So these are living, you know, these are living creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They communicate and obey and worship their Lord in a way that's befitting to them. As Allah says that there isn't a single creation in the heavens or the earth, except that it glorifies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It, it declares His perfection. But what does Allah say? لَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ But you don't understand the way that they glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and declare the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah even mentions to us, أَلَمْ تَرَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَسْجُدُ لَهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do you not see that everything prostrates to him? Everything in the heavens and the earth actually does sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that, He actually gets specific. He says, يَسْجُدُ لَهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ وَالنُّجُومُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the sun, the moon, uh, the stars, الْجِبَالِ the mountains, الشَّجَرِ the trees, الدَّوَابِ the animals, وَكَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ and many people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do you not see how they all prostrate themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But again, you don't understand the way that they prostrate and do sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, so when you see the Prophet ﷺ, for example, talking about the sun, there's an authentic hadith where the Prophet ﷺ mentions how the sun uh, makes sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single night. It prostrates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
every single night and takes its permission to rise. The Prophet ﷺ clearly is not referring to the physical sajda, the way that we know how to make sajda, but rather the obedience it shows to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, people try to poke fun at the Quran and the Sunnah. So they'll they'll take for you know the ayah in Surah Al-Kahf where Allah Azza wa Jalla describes Dul Qarnain that uh, that that he saw the sun taghrubu fi ayn and hamia that he saw the sun uh, setting in dark water and they would say oh they believe that the sun sets in dark water but even the earliest scholars you read the tafsir of Ibn Kathir rahimahullah taala which is the most famous tafsir in Islam and you can read that tafsir of the ayah and he says that it, what it refers to is how when you're watching the sun set. Uh, upon water in the ocean, you would see it disappearing. Subhanallah. And, and anyone who's watched the sunset in an ocean, you would re, you would understand what this ayah is speaking about. Or Sayyuti rahimahullah, who said what it means is uh, the perspective of the eye, the way that you see things. The point being here that all of these things cry, they declare the perfection of Allah, they make sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that's befitting to them. But everything is in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what's interesting, the ulama, the scholars, they point out that when Allah mentions the tasbih, the glorification and the declaration of perfection that comes from these beings, He's referring to His perfection in creating, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's perfection in, in, in His creation. When He refers to its sajda, all of these things prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He refers to their obedience. And when you, com- when you combine the two, in their perfect course, in all of these celestial bodies running their perfect course, in a way that if they were off by even a millisecond, it would cause absolute havoc, that in and of itself is, is submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his obedience to the laws that were placed upon them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, I remember uh, reading an article uh, that said that was called Jupiter, our guardian planet. And I was like, what is this talking about? And obviously, Jupiter is this humongous planet right next to us, right? That that's called called the guardian planet, the vacuum cleaner of Earth. The, you know, it's it's it takes all of those meteors and 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 at, you know those objects that would crash into the Earth. Its massiveness absorbs the gravity and so on and so forth. And Subhanallah, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, you know, this author is actually ascribing power to Jupiter. Who is the one that put Jupiter there? Who is the one that placed everything in its perfect orbit? and it's perfect space that though it moves rapidly, everything moves rapidly, it still runs its perfect course. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُلٌّ فِي فَلَكٍ يَسْبَحُونَ Allah describes the perfect orbit of the, the celestial bodies and it's beautiful because the ayah, كُلٌّ فِي فَلَكٍ يَسْبَحُونَ Allah describing the swimming, you know, the perfect orbit of these celestial bodies, even these, these letters in that ayah orbit around the letter Yah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I hope you enjoyed and benefited from this video. If you did, then please do share it. And if you'd like to follow the rest of the series, then please do click on the top box. And if you'd like to see all of the other episodes and the other videos we have to offer, then please click on the box under that. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more amazing content.